the southeast in settings similar to this one at Villa Rica, Georgia. People gather for all-day singings. Some are annual events. Many are conventions drawing singers from over 200 miles around. Here are the sole inheritors of a unique folk art which is traced back to colonial New England and which has survived with little alteration. The Yankee Singing School originated in the 18th century around Boston. Taught by itinerant masters, the musically unsophisticated students attended for recreation and fun, as well as education. Of course, the hardest part of learning to sing is to learn to read music. So the early masters invented shapes or patent notes. With the new notes, persons of the weakest capacity, so it was claimed, could be taught to sing quickly and easily. Soon, however, musical instruments, particularly the keyboard organ, were imported from Europe, followed by fashionable or so-called good music, popular on the continent. And the singing schools became unstylish in the growing urban areas of the Northeast. Shape notes came to be regarded as the musical notation of the naive, simple people who sang strange songs in an almost primitive idiom. So the Yankee Singing School, too countrified for the refined city dweller, moved south and westward, along with the American pioneer. The vocal music we are accustomed to today is in the European tradition. The harmony is based on three-note chords, and the melody is usually assigned to the sopranos. But the early indigenous American music that was taught by the singing schoolmasters kept the melody with the tenors and structured the harmony on two-note chords. In the southern hill country, away from the coastline and cities, the Yankee singing school tradition survived. One singing convention, still meeting today, for example, has written records of its sessions going back for more than 120 years. But it isn't called Yankee singing anymore. Around here, it's usually called sacred harp singing. The Sacred Harp is the Book of Songs. First published in Georgia in 1844, the songs were already old back then. The Sacred Harp has been through many printings, but has never been out of print. It's used by nearly all the singing conventions. The typical convention singing meets for about two hours in the morning, breaks for dinner on the grounds, and resumes in the afternoon. Strict rules of decorum are followed. The convention is opened, Elections are held, then the singing begins. Singers sit in a hollow square. Each leader goes to the center to direct the song. The key man sets the pitch, and the piece is sung, first by the notes, fa so la mi, then the words. Other vestiges of the old singing schools remain. The person leading the singing may be said to be teaching the lesson. 
The body of singers is often called the class. So in the South, nearly any weekend, in some small meeting house on a country road, the good old songs are sung and the tradition continues. Since the 1970 session of the Georgia State Convention, the following singers and lovers of Sacred Heart music have been claimed by death. Thomas B. McGraw, Dewey McCullough, Mrs. Belle Denson, Dr. John L. Dora, Mrs. Janie Robinson, J.K. Barr, Roy Fuller, Jethro Johnson, Mrs. T.D. Knowles, Nanny Dean Land Nelly, Mr. G. Seaburn Dawes, Albert Dawes, Mrs. Audie Duncan, J.H. Jones, Tom Davidson, and Mrs. C.F. Rogers. I make a motion that this reading of this memorial be made a part of our ministry and so forth.
visiting gets done at a singing convention. Everyone from the local area brings a covered dish or dishes. Many bring complete dinners. And it's all put together for everyone attending the singing for a potluck dinner. And what potluck? There's fried chicken and ham and roast beef and gravy, potato salad and baked beans and squash and green beans and turnip greens and peas and cakes and pies and oh my, well, you get the idea. And friendly? Everyone is welcome. The old timers with their recollections and the first timers fresh from the city. It's all part of the rural folk culture of the South. Dinner on the grounds. The singing schoolmaster still teaches youngsters to sing the good old songs. That's how this folk art has been preserved. Today's teachers give instruction in their spare time, just as their fathers and grandfathers did before them. Hugh McGraw lives and teaches singing schools in Bremen, Georgia. He is also the key man, or the one who sets the pitch for the Georgia State Convention singings. We brought a group of boys and girls to our studio to demonstrate a typical singing school lesson. Let's go to the board and review for just a moment. Sacred Heart music has four characters. The triangle note is fa. Now what is this? Fa. The round note is so. What is this? So. The square note are la. La. The diamond shaped notes are me. Me. Now these four characters are placed upon the musical staff and they are doubled, each one except the last one. And they're placed on lines and spaces to form a tune. You have to be familiar with these notes. You have to recognize them when you see them on the musical staff, and you have to recognize them by sounds. And now I'd like for us to run up and down the musical staff and get um, accustomed to the sounds of the note. Oh, now we beat time down and up for common time. So beat time with me. Oh, oh, so. But we can do better. Let's try it again. Good. You're doing better. In Sacred Heart music, we have three different modes of time that we sing. We have common time, triple time, and compound time. We have three modes of common time, which is two over two, four over four, and two over four. Two modes of triple time, which are three over two and three over four. Two modes of compound time, which are six over four and six over eight. The top figure, next to the signature tells you how many notes is in the measure and the bottom figure tells you 
what kind of notes. Now we're gonna take our, show you how to tune up out of singing. The bass and soprano or tenor takes this sound, the alto will take their sound, and the treble will take their sound. After you get your sound, then you're ready for your part. Oh, 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 oh. That's good. Now I want the males to follow the yellow stick and the females to follow the red stick. the song. Before we get into the song, if you'll notice in the right-hand corner at the top of the song, Aaron Williams, 17 and 60. That's when this music to this song was first written. If you look to the left-hand corner at the top of the song, Isaac Watts. He was the composer of the words. All the songs throughout our book, it's the same method. The one on the right-hand corner tells who wrote the music and in what year. It was written. The one on the left tells you who wrote the poetry. And now we want to go through this song with each one of our different parts, and then we will sing the song. We will take the triple first of the top line. Oh, oh. Oh. 
All right, now, Aaron Williams will be real pleased with that. Now, let's all sing it out real loud. <coughs> oh, so, so. We sang the fifth verse. No. sing the last verse. Sing Fossil Law.